This is my land. I born here. This is my land. I live here. This is my land. My bones will rest here. Here on this two by three rock. For some, she's not the prettiest. But by God, for me, she is the best spot. But by God, for me, she is the best spot. My bim, my love. They ain't joking when they say that time waits on no man. Here we are on the home stretch of the event that brought us proper indulgence served with the authenticity of the island's culture and culinary favors. But in a way we could close this chapter without taking you back. I mean all the way back. Draw close. It's time for the story of rum, from the birthplace of rum. to Barbados, we are the creators and the originators of rum. Rum was born here on a very small island in the middle of nowhere over 300 years ago. And Mount Gay was at the head of this, this beginning of this new journey. You are on hallowed ground, okay? This is the location, the home, the origin of rum. Y'all hear that? Hallowed ground, so no messing around. We're gonna head outside. Grab some hard hats so we know, we look as if we know what we're about to do. How are we gonna get started, all right? Even though it may seem like it's a, a very small and insignificant thing, I'm taking you to see a well. That is the reason Mount Gear is here today. If this was not located where it was, this production here would not have existed. I did say the well is just about 300 feet deep. If you're gonna peer over the railing to look into our well, hold on to anything that may fall off. Cause if it falls in, it stays in there. Whoa, I better hang on to these shades real tight, yeah. Water in Barbados is about 95 to 98% drinkable directly off the surface. You guys are more than welcome to give it a taste. It tastes remarkably just like water. Yeah. We use three things to make our rum here at Mount Gay. We use water, we use molasses, we use yeast. Nothing more, nothing less. So along the journey, we're gonna see those three things, how we put them together, then we get to taste a bit of it in the end. We're gonna head off now to see the second ingredient. So we're gonna go this way. We had the enslaved Africans. We had the indentured servants, both coming with knowledge of how distillation and fermentation worked. So as the rain fell on that molasses diluting it, and the wild yeast we have all around us on the island began to attack it, it fermented. As it fermented, they consumed it. As they consumed it, they started to have way too much fun while they were at work. That led to the discovery of rum. <sighs> My Bajans, trust me to figure that out. Barbados owns the only sugarcane breeding facility in the Western Hemisphere. The most Caribbean strains of sugarcane, they actually get started here and then they're exported. Now we're also making rum, which means it's gonna be ethanol and CO2 vapors in the air. It can sometimes create an invisible cloud. 
If at any point in time you feel a bit lightheaded, you feel dizzy, please indicate to myself. Tasha's in the back and we have Miguel up front. Do not wait until you're halfway to the ground to say, Tina, help me please, all right? Follow me, everyone. <coughs> Tina, help me please. Just practicing. Now we have all three ingredients here together. We have two types of molasses and we have the watching yeast. Now our local molasses here in Barbados is very rich in sugar, whereas Caribbean molasses, they're a lot richer in nutrients. Because ours have that higher sugar content, it will be sweeter and it has fruitier characteristics, very malted with a type of caramel consistency. We're gonna start with that one first. Molasses tends to be very good for you. It is good for your hair, your nails, your skin, and of course, your libido. <laughs> Yeast is one of the most important ingredients in any production you're doing alcohol with. If you don't have the yeast, you're not gonna get the alcohols. Our yeast is proprietary, it's made for us and us alone, so no one else can ever have it. We have to put these three things together to start a wash, which he's gonna call that a mash, that is done over here in our vat loft. At this stage, we're gonna jump back on the bus okay. to head on down to our bonds. So everyone, welcome to our bond houses. We have four main ones in this area. At any given time, you can keep about 50,000 barrels on site. So everyone, welcome to bond number two. Us, make a rum is like a puzzle. I can give you everything. I can give you the water from the well, the molasses, the yeast, the barrel. You go home, you make something that may or may not be amazing, but you're not going to be able to replicate a Mount Gay rum as you will always be missing the most important piece and that is our master blender, Trudy Ann Branker. If it says T. Branker on it, she physically touched it at some point in time in its life. So is yeah. it true to say that then what we consume is part of her creation. Yes, it is. Yes. A woman. A woman. I love it. Okay. <laughs> it's time to do our, our tasting. That's why we're here, right? <laughs> Let's pass it under our noses. What's the first thing that you notice? Darker, deeper, sweeter, smoky, woody, oaky, toasty, chocolate, baked goods, wonderful, okay? Our rums have four key aromas, vanilla, mocha, sweet almonds, and bananas. As it gets older, they evolve, become more cooked, baked, stewed, spiced. So for me, this smells like my grandmother's Christmas rum cake. Yeah? You should drink Excel in a clean glass with good company. Once again, it's that connection between the history of Mount Gay and Barbados itself. These are two things that grew together, so to speak. So if you're going to have a food and rum festival, the only rum you can think about then will be Mount Gay. My favorite part of my tour would definitely have to be making a connection between the rum and the people. For us at Mount Gay, it goes beyond just what you're drinking in your glass or what you see in a bottle. It's understanding that we make a rum for the people. We want that no matter where in the world you are, you have a glass of our rum, or you see a bottle on a shelf in a, a bar or restaurant. It connects you to a moment or memory, or even a person you've met from Barbados. We want you to remember your favorite beach, or your perfect scenery, your perfect Sunday morning drive. That is the connection that we want to make. And being able to, to share this with people and to evoke those memories and feelings in people is definitely my favorite part about working here. For hers was a beauty that required no enhancement, no accessorizing, no makeup, no sullying deposits tarnished her pigments. What an experience! What a story! What a beauty! Simply liquid gold! And how better to bring this festival to a stunning close than with a liquid gold feast?
the culmination of it all. Elegance and opulence will be the headliner tonight, underscored by a divine culinary experience unlike any other. It's time to tantalize your palate and soothe your soul with the experience of a lifetime. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Liquid Gold Feast. here at the finale of the Barbados Food and Rum Festival. It is Liquid Gold Feast and I have Chef Damien Leach with me. Now you have a very popular station. What do you have on offer here today? Um, I have a ginger barbecue pigtail with a yellow split pea puree with a pineapple chutney and then we have pickle sikia and shrimp with steamed pudding and cucumber and tomato salsa. Now you are very well known for elevating a lot of local ingredients. Why is that so important to you? I mean obviously, obviously I'm a Bajan so I that's always been my focus when it, when it comes to cooking. When people travel to Barbados, they're not traveling to Barbados to eat a New Zealand lamb. When I got so many beautiful black belly sheep all over the island, you know what I mean? So that, that's, that's always my thing and that's, it works well for me. You seem to be a staple um, of the Food and Rum Festival. How do you continue to change that menu? Obviously, that's, that's always a, a challenge, but as chefs, we, obviously we're, we're creative. We like to, we like to do something different. And, and sometimes I'll bring back something. Like I'll, I'll give you an example of the pigtail. I've done pigtail here before, but I said I'm going to bring it back because a lot of people were asking me about it. And I got a little competition tonight with Chef Craig. You know if you hear what that is. So we got a little pigtail bottle. So it's just, it's all fun. And Chef Craig could cook. They ended up denying that. He has a good dish. but I. I I know I'm going to say nothing. I can just let the people say who picks is better. But. All right, so we have to put that to the test. Well, I know that you prepare lovely dishes, but talk to me about what you're wearing and who you are wearing tonight. <laughs> Um, well, tonight I am um, I am absolutely blessed and honored to be wearing quintessential by Tea Stout. Um, it is my uh, my line um, that I've been designing now for about five six years. Um, so you know I, I, I finally got the platform more or less to launch it on and uh, launch it properly and launch it super sexy. Um, and you know and I, I I think everyone here is happy with with the wear. Everyone, uh, all the chefs are, are ecstatic about what they're wearing. You know, um, extremely creative, um, water and stain repellent and available to market um, by the beginning of next month. What do you have on offer here tonight at Liquid Gold Feast? So tonight I have a smoked fowl cock, which is a four hour smoked uh, boneless chicken thighs. Um, those have been marinated, brined and marinated. Um, so that's, that's 48 hours, 24 brined, 24 marinated. Um, that's going on top of squash and pumpkin sad seed. Um, on top of that is a roasted garlic and tarragon cream, savory praline, comfy mushrooms and local chestnut mushrooms. <laughs> Are given vegan cuisine. It's something that we've never seen before on the Food and Rum Festival. How does that make you feel? I'm very passionate about vegan food. I don't think you have to be a vegan to enjoy vegan food. So I'm really passionate about doing this and I hope everybody enjoys what I'm offering. What has been the feedback so far to your dishes tonight? Bomb.com! <laughs> yeah, it's been a really good positive uh, response. So I, honestly, I couldn't be happier right now. So talk to me a little bit about what you have on offer. What are you pairing each dish with? It is locally sourced, so we do traditional uh, Bajan fish cakes. We use artichoke in place of fish, and we did a Bajan seasoning aioli. So that was one of, the, um, one of the main ones. We also did a sweet potato and lentil roti with a coconut and cilantro chutney. That was really good. And we made a sweet potato focaccia with cashew cheese sauce. There we go. <laughs> when I was offered, I said I'm going to give it my all, and that was it. I was like, I'm going to blow them away because it was an opportunity that I didn't have before and I know that people love the food once they give it a try. The biggest thing is, oh, it has no meat, but it forces you to, to be more creative when you're dealing with plant-based cuisine. So I knew I could bring it and I'm glad the response was positive. And Grace, this is your first time. Are you nervous? The nervousness has passed. It was nervous a couple weeks ago, but not now, not now. So how did it feel when you got the call to represent at Liquid Gold Feast? 
honestly, I was really overwhelmed because as a child growing up and seeing all the big chefs on the roundabouts and posters, I always wanted to be up there. And now, here you are. So who inspires you? And you talked about seeing all the big chefs and all the big names on the posters. Who do you really look up to locally or internationally as a chef? Uh, locally, probably Damien Leach. He's a very wonderful chef, very talented. He's probably one of the top 10 to look up to. So how did you go about preparing for such an event like Liquid Wolf Feast? Well, first of all, you got to write a menu. You got to cost it. You got to make sure it, it flows when it comes here. You know, and for, first and foremost, it has to taste good. And from what I've heard, it's tasting good. So I know you have a lot going on, but tell us really quickly about the menu. What do you have here on offer today? All right, this menu is very excited about it. We have a bougie cuckoo. So at the bottom, you have an okra imbued polenta square. And on top of that, you have a Creole codfish. And to complement that, you have a pepper cucumber twine. Right. Now my other dish that people seem to love a lot is my ham risotto. So this risotto, it has in ham, plantain, beer, green peas, and then on top of that is a ginger inoculated carrot shaving. Appetizer, no? besides um, the vegan dishes? I've had um, Thaddeus Sealy, really good corned beef. I've had Chef Craig, excellent macaroni pie and lamb and pigtail. And I've had Damien Lynch as well, the pickle sea cap. Are you going to make it any second rounds? Yes, for sure. For the vegan food, I love it. And for Chef Craig, so good. This is the first time there's been vegan featured at a food and rum. How do you feel about it? I like it. I like it. Like I'm convinced. I want to try it now. Who have you had so far here at the festival? So I've had Anne-Marie Leach, um, Nicholas Eiffel, Sadia Sealy. Um, the food is excellent so far. My favorite would have to be the beef brisket. That was the beef brisket. That was really amazing. Um, and Anne-Marie's cashew cheese is also extremely good. Yeah. So have you tried her vegan fish cake? Not yet. I'm Apparently, to try that. They've been all the rage here. I have okay. to go around and try some things myself. Yeah, have you had any um, cocktails? I've had um, Casanova's East Coast something. Yeah. yeah, that was really good. How are you enjoying the event so far? Oh, it's been awesome. Once in a lifetime event for us to be here and enjoy it with all the locals and everybody. And what about you? Love the amazing, the food, the atmosphere, the people. It's just off the charts. Have you gone to any more events um, at the festival or is this your first one? Nope, we went to Oyston's on Thursday night, we went to Lawrence Gap on Friday, and now we're here. You've definitely done it all. Have you had anything to eat yet? The pigtails? Oh, that was awesome. First time I ever had pigtail. Yeah. Where are you from? Florida. Florida. From Florida, and this is your first time having pigtails, and you enjoyed that experience? Oh yes, it's been lovely. Very, very lovely. Will you come back to Barbados for Food and Rum Festival 2023? Absolutely. Yes, because we want to be breezing. Michael, what are you having to eat tonight? Everything I can get my hands on. Now I heard something. I heard that you are someone's father here. Yeah, my son is Seth Hassan Bromley, who's one of the chefs. Oh, I love to I love to taste this food. So what is he making tonight? Do you know or have you had it? Yeah, pork belly and uh, salt beef. Is he the best one here or is there? I wouldn't comment on that.
absolutely lovely. I just want to take a look. And let's talk a bit. I know this is a food festival, yes. but everyone has come out in exquisite form and dress. How do you like what's going on, the opulence, the fashion? I think people were excited to kind of get back out there and dust off their heels and everything else and come out and do an extra elegant night. So I'm very happy everybody's in their gold and black and red and looking fabulous, eating up everything, having a great time, drinking up the cocktail, so could not be happier. Now, as social media manager, I know that you're getting a lot of feedback, especially from the international market. What has the response been to the festival this year after being off for two years? Have you seen the pictures of the food? So let's start there. You know, people are really impressed with the level of cuisine that we have here in Barbados. Um, they've also been extremely supportive of the Junior Chef program that we have going on because, you know, the theme is Feed the Future. So, you know, we've been getting a lot of likes and a lot of engagement on the young chefs. I mean, now people are looking at their story because with social media, my team, we, we've been trying to tell the stories of the young chefs, of the local chefs, of everybody. So, yeah, people have really been engaging with that. And I know one of the things that you must be excited about is the introduction of a vegan chef. It's really been a highlight of the festival. Right, so I'm vegan and normally when I go to all inclusive, it's like, you know, let me get some fries or a couple pieces of lettuce. But Amory has been doing a phenomenal job. Rice and rum that we had yesterday. Her all, you know, her food was amazing and tonight it's no different. I was there for about half an hour just eating. I, I literally threw this together because I decided to come at the last minute. So I'm glad it's a hit, you know? <laughs> I call this my opera dress because this is often my opera outfit. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty glad to have been able to have a lovely event to be able to wear it at home. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I live in Italy, so I very much love twists on Italian food. And Andres Antoine, he has done a Barbadian polenta and a Barbadian risotto. It's fantastic. And then my friend Damien, he's done like a pigtail. I love that as well. And my girlfriend Ria, she's a chef as well. Both of her dishes are exquisite. So I think this has been a real success. I've been to all of the events for Food Around Bar. I think um, the St. Lawrence, yeah, but they have been well executed. I, I think this is a phenomenal, phenomenal event that the BTMI has put on and I can't wait to come back next year. of the final event of the Barbados Food and Rum Festival, Liquid Gold Feast, and I have Keisha, Manager of Communications and PR here with me. Keisha, how did it go for you? It went well, it went well. So the, we are at the end, as um, Charlene said, um, four days, seven amazing events, and now we are here at Liquid Gold Feast. Everybody's having a good time, and we are almost at the end, guys, and it was an amazing festival. So you would say that everything went exactly the way you wanted it. You know, it's been two years since the festival, and we're so happy to have you back. Did it go as planned? Oh, definitely. It did go as planned. When we first conceptualized the plan with, between myself and my director, April Thomas, we wanted to involve um, the veterans of the festival. And also with the team Feed the Future, we wanted to involve the, the kids. The ones coming up, we also wanted to bring in junior chefs, and we definitely did that. So inside, you're going to be seeing a mixture of 17 chefs, both that were here before and the first time tonight. And we also had a competition where we included the junior chefs, where they got to cook off and share their skills. So yeah, it did go as planned. Exciting times, we had lots of fun events. What are you looking forward to for 2023? I would say the Rama Rice Breakfast Party, for sure. We brought that one because we wanted to, you know, include all demographics. We wanted to include the younger folks as well. And they had a good time yesterday at the breakfast party. So we want to bring that back as well and also continue to involve the youth. People who are watching right now, what would you say to them to encourage them to come in for 2023? I mean, what else can I say about but that flight? Come and experience it for yourself. This is my Barbados.
my bim, my love. Her honor I shall guard with my blood if needs be. She is my home, my birthplace. She is my beloved country.